Okay. Uh, in the last lectures, we were talking about a moving electrical charge inside a magnetic field, and we were assuming that this moving electric charge is moving in free space. And in the case of the Hall effect, we said that the charge may be free carrier charges inside a conducting strip. The question now is what would be the magnetic force on a current carrying wire? The current carrying wire is effectively some sort of guided moving charges. So in current carrying wire, there are carrier charges which are moving with drift velocity inside the wire. Uh, in this case, the current direction, if the, direct, if the current direction is upward, it means that the electrons are drifting downward because the electrons are negative charges and the free carriers inside any conductor is mainly due to the electrons so we are talking about negative carrier charges moving in the opposite direction of the proposed current the question now is what will happen on a wire carrying a current inside a magnetic field normal to this wire so assuming that we have magnetic field pointing outside the screen so it is the magnetic field in this case is toward us or toward your eyes so magnetic field that emerges from the plane of the beige causes the electrons and consequently the wire to be deflected uh, in right or in left according to the direction of the curve so assuming that we are talking about negative the charges moving downward and we have magnetic field outside the bridge now by applying the right hand rule the right hand rule states that we are putting our four fingers in the direction of the drift velocity and moving toward uh, the magnetic field we will find the direction of the magnetic force but the charges here are in negative so the direction of the force will be in the negative to the right hand so in this case the force will be toward right okay this force actually acts on the charges inside the wire and because the charges cannot move outside the wire so the force actually acts on the wire itself so if we have a wire without any current the current equals zero inside the magnetic field there is no force on this wire now if the wire carrying a current which is going from down to up such that the drift velocity of the electron is coming from up to down so in this case there will be a force to the right direction so the wire will be bent to the right like this if we are assuming that the current in the opposite direction is coming from top to bottom so the drift velocity of the electron in this case coming from bottom to top in this case the force will be in the opposite direction so it would be towards left To calculate the magnetic force on a current carrying wire, we are assuming that we have a fixed length of wire L. And assuming that the carrier charges are moving with a constant drift velocity VD, so the charge Q will pass from the beginning of the piece of the wire to the to its end at time equal L over VD. So this is the time required such that carrier charge electrons coming from the starting of the wire 
up to the end of the world. Now we know actually the value of the current. So the value of the charge can be calculated as the current multiplied by the time t. So the total charge passed through the time t would be i multiplied by t would equal i multiplied by L over Vt. This is the value of the charges which will pass this section. Now, by applying the force of the magnetic field on moving the charges, it would be Q multiplied by its velocity, which is the drift velocity, multiplied by the magnetic field, V, multiplied by the sine angle between them. And in our case, the magnetic field and the drift velocity are orthogonal to each other, or perpendicular to each other, so the angle between them is 90 degrees. So we are talking about sine 90 degrees, which is 1. Now the value of Q is I L over VD. So Q multiplied by VD, multiplied by V, multiplied by sine 90, which is 1. This VD can go with this VD. So we are talking about the force on this wire section would be I, the current passing this section, multiplied by the length of this section, multiplied by the magnetic field in Tennessee V. So the force on a current carrying wire is the current magnitude multiplied by the length of the wire multiplied by the magnetic field. FB equals I L B. The question now is what will be the case if the wire is tilted by an angle phi with respect to the magnetic field? So this is the wire where the current is passing through and this is the magnetic field. So in this case we will apply the rule with the sine phi. Sine phi here will not be unity. So in this case the force on the section of the wire would be I multiplied by L multiplied by V multiplied by the sine of the angle between the magnetic field lines and the direction of the current along the wire. So FB would equal I L B sine phi. By generalizing this rule in vector quantities, we can say that the magnetic force on a current carrying wire equals the value of the current multiplied by the vector L where the vector here is the direction of the current cross product with the magnetic field in Tennessee B. So L cross B equals the magnitude of L magnitude of B sine the angle between them. And the cross product indicates that the direction of the force is perpendicular to both the direction of the wire and the direction of the magnetic field. So effectively, the force is normal to the plane containing the current and the magnetic field. So the force would be in this direction. And actually, the force is following up the right hand rule once again. So if we are putting our four fingers in the direction of L and bend it towards the direction of B, our thumb will be directing towards the force due to the magnetic field Fp. Now if uh, the current carrying wire is not straight line, it is crooked uh, wire. So in this case, we divide it into small pieces and at each piece, we can calculate the force at each piece and the total force will be obtained by integrating these forces. So, if the wire is not straight or the field is not uniform, we can imagine that the wire is broken up into small straight segments. Now we are going to apply the rule, uh, the magnetic force Fb equals I L cross B at each segment. So the force on the wire as a whole is then the vector sum of all forces on this segment that make up. In differential form, we can say that delta Fb, the incremental 
force equal the current multiplied by the incremental length cross product the magnetic field B. We can find the resultant force on any given arrangement of current by integrating this force and integrating this length on the other hand. As an example, if you are saying that we have a wire carrying current I and this current or this wire exerts a magnetic force FB in the direction Z. So the figure shows the current I through the wire in a uniform magnetic field as well as the magnetic force acting on the wire. The field is oriented, so the force is maximum. So the field is oriented, so the force is maximum. It means that the field is normal to the current, or the angle between the field and the current is 90 degrees. The question is, in what direction is the field? So the field in the direction by or x or z. So this is the question. First of all, the field is oriented, so the force is maximum. It means that the field is normal to the current. So it can either in y direction positive or negative, or in z direction positive or negative. But the force will not be in the same direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, the magnetic field cannot be in the z direction. So it can only be in positive y direction or negative direction, such that the force, the current, and the magnetic field are orthogonal to each other. Each one has 90 degrees with respect to the two other vectors. The question is, is it in positive y or negative y? To determine this, let us go back to the rule of the force on a current, uh, current carrying wire. In current carrying wire, the force equal I L as a vector, where the vector L in the direction of I, so in this case, it is in the negative x direction, cross B, where B is the magnetic field. So we need, if we have our four fingers of right hand in the direction I, to be rotated 90 degrees in positive or negative y such that our thumb will be in the direction of positive z. So if we apply our right hand rule, so if you are going toward positive y, the force will be in negative z, so it is not suitable. Now, if our four fingers in the right hand in the direction r and moving toward negative y, our thumb will be in the positive direction z, which is the direction of the force. So the magnetic field in this case in the direction of negative y. Okay. Here another example. We have a straight horizontal lens of copper wire has a current 28 ampere through it. What is the magnitude and direction of the minimum magnetic field V needed to suspend the wire? Mean suspend the wire, it means that the wire tends to go to the ground by uh, the gravitational force. So we need magnetic field such that introduce magnetic force to the upper direction and this magnetic force is required to be at least equal the gravity force which is the mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration mg so in this case it is required to introduce magnetic force equals mg and opposite in direction right so the linear density or mass per length of the wire is 46.6 gram per meter. Now, to find out uh, this magnetic force, 
we will assume that the current uh, is going out of the screen or going out of the base, so the current uh, in front of you. So this is the direction of the current, and we actually know that the magnetic force equals I L cross D. So if we have our uh, four fingers of uh, right hand uh, going outside the screen and we want a force in upward so it means that we have or we need magnetic field going in the direction from left to the right so this is the current the cross B would introduce the FD so Actually, this is the direction of the magnetic field. The direction of the required magnetic field is coming from left to right. The question now is what its magnitude. To find out its magnitude, we need the magnetic force equal the gravitational force. So, magnetic force is I, L, B, sine phi. And we here assume the magnetic field is normal. To the electric line or the electric current so in this case sine phi equal 1 because phi is 90 degrees so the magnetic force is I L B I is 28 uh, ampere and V is the unknown and the lens let us assume that we are going to take unit lens 1 meter for example so here we have the magnetic force the gravitational force is mg and the mass per unit length is 46.6 gram multiplied by the gravitational we will find out the gravitational force if the electric force or, or sorry if the magnetic force equal the gravitational force the wire will be suspended will not drop or will not go up so in this case if this equals this, it means that the required magnetic field B would be mg over I L sine phi. And we already using mass per length, mass per length, m over L, mass per length. So mass per length here is the 46.6 gram, but we are saying in kilograms, so in kilogram it would be 10 to the power minus 3 so this is the mass per L G is the gravitational acceleration 9.8 meter per second square I is the current and phi is 90 degrees so sine phi is 1 so in this case is 28 so the required magnetic field to suspend this wire is 1.6 cross or multiply by 10 to the power minus 2 okay